Okay, so in this second video of uh, session four, we're just going to spend a couple of minutes thinking about some of the nudges that might be used to address the issue of obesity. Now, normally I have a breakout session with my students and they go away into small groups and come back with some really quite interesting ideas for nudges. I'm not going to share all of them with you because uh, some of them haven't been introduced and uh, are wacky to say the least. But the EAST framework can be a useful tool for trying to categorize the different types of nudge. EAST, if you remember from the previous session, I think, session three, uh, lesson three, EAST stands for make it easy, make it attractive, make it social, make it timely. Now, that's fine in theory, but, but what does it mean in, in practice? Well, uh, here are some examples of behavioral nudges that have been tried, are being used or considered in the UK and, and in other countries. Uh, one is choice architecture, the idea, of course, that Richard Thaler came up with. So the way in which a cafeteria, a canteen, a restaurant is organised uh, can influence the choices. So the, you know, if, you want, uh, if you want a burger or a hot dog, you can have one or a coffee, but you have to go past the health, healthy uh, salad bar to get there. The design of a building and a cafeteria in particular, the layout, the signage uh, to encourage you to eat healthily, the information, for example. Uh, can be quite important. Default choices on menus, default portion sizes. So if you change the default, that in theory is an easy way to change consumption. Um, default choices, how menus are, are uh, organized, what appears at the top, uh, how, how is it presented. If you change the default portion sizes, uh, then that can have an impact on people's overall consumption. One of the interesting nudges is to change the size of plates used in a cafeteria. Typically, if you use a smaller plate or bowl, uh, people think it's fuller earlier and therefore they tend to, to eat less. Pre-commitment devices are also being trialled. I think there's a, a trial in Scottish primary schools where schools that are providing nutritious school meals to their students, they send an email out or a message out to parents the week before and parents choose, along hopefully with their students, parents choose which meals they'd like to have and uh, hopefully you get to choose the healthy option. That actually has a double effect. First of all, it's a kind of pre-commitment device, so you're kind of stuck with that stuck with that choice. And secondly, of course, it allows the school better to plan uh, what food to buy and, and it hopefully reduces wastage as well. Might be worth trying to search out uh, some of the Scottish experiments on pre-commitment devices. Removing sweets from checkout counters, sweets and other uh, items. Tesco was one of the first supermarkets to take away the bulk of sweets and other attractive things for kids from their checkout counters. Again, to act as a nudge to reduce kind of impulse buying. One of the interesting ideas suggested by one of my students was perhaps to add calorie details to receipts at checkout. Now, it doesn't necessarily change the immediate purchase, but if you're getting details at checkout about the calorie details of the products you've bought, that could be interesting information. Uh, it could be that in labelling of foods and drinks, the labelling tells you how many hours of exercise you have to do to burn off the calories if you consume a, a bottle of, of a fizzy drink or, or a, a cheeky donut. But there are behavioural nudges being used. Uh, in the previous video, I talked uh, in theory three, session three, I talked about schools. Here are some pictures from my school's canteen. The layout of the food, the choice of the food, lifting the food up a few inches to try and encourage people to... Uh, to make better use of the salad bar is a nice behavioral nudge. Very interesting book just come out by a guy called Jez Groom, who used to be at Ogilvy, now has his own consultancy, and he's been involved with trying to tackle uh, obesity uh, and indeed the epidemic of obesity in Mexico. It's huge. Mexico has been at the top of the league worldwide. Whole series of initiatives, including a mixture of nudges and shoves, Jez writes, we've made fruit and vegetables macho by enlisting WE stars and making arm wrestling juices. We limited portions for children by creating plates that grow as you get older. And we designed green plates that helped camouflage green vegetables and increased portion uptake. So there's an aspect that nudge can make a difference. Uh, the question is whether it makes sufficient difference to really tackle what is a fundamental economic, social and and health issue. So sometimes nudges on their own aren't enough. You have to shove consumers through financial incentives. 
Higher taxes, for example, new taxes on high fat, high sugar and salt foods, higher taxes on high sugar drinks, of course, has come into the UK. Perhaps go the other way, subsidise, perhaps subsidies for healthy foods and drinks, perhaps better local authority and government financial support for encouraging exercise. The NHS, for example, could provide better funding for people to uh, commit to exercise regimes as a way of bringing down their weight. And it may well be the case that the government brings in tougher laws and regulations, banning the sale of energy drinks, for example, for under-16s, etc. So there's a whole series of shoves. This is real intervention by governments to change people's behaviour. Some people think, for example, this is the time for uh, banning junk food advertising. Uh, quite strong support that uh, there should be a 9pm watershed on junk food adverts. Um, again, designed to uh, to reduce the, the marketing and the impact on people's choices. Mexico is actually a really good example of a country that has one of the few countries, uh, Hungary has introduced it, They've introduced a tax on high fat and high sugar foods and drinks. The UK brought in the sugar drinks levy in 2018. Mexico is really trying to tackle it with some taxes. And what I'll do is I'll put in a couple of really good videos uh, on the web page, on the Tutor 2 web page, a couple of supporting videos, which I can't build into this presentation for copyright reasons. I'll bring them into the web page so that you can have a look at uh, some examples. So we're going to need a combination of strong government interventions, uh, tactical interventions through tax and subsidy, better information for consumers, and I hope you agree there is some potential for using behavioural nudges to nudge us to a healthier lifestyle.